Okay, so I don't know if you're aware of this, but it's actually quite common to clock cars here in the UK. I was in the market to buy a Prius Plus, and I found this dealer that has a lot of good cars, actually, um, with fairly low mileage. Um, for example, 2014, 30,000 miles, that's, you know, six-year-old, three-year-old car, uh, sorry, a seven-year-old car here, 41,000 on it. And um, this one here caught my eye. Uh, it was quite expensive. Um, but it only has 27,000 miles on the clock. And if you flick through the pictures, it's in great condition. Um, and so I had a start a negotiating to buy this. And I asked the dealer if they have the full service history, and he sent me the export certificate uh, showing a mileage 42,000 kilometers. So this car has been imported from Japan to the UK, which is quite a common practice. They don't sell the Prius Plus in the UK, so that's fair enough. So there's an export certificate, um, and then there's the auction details. Uh, this here shows the mileage and the condition, uh, 43,000 kilometers which is fine and a category four so class four here is the important thing you would never import a car that's not a four or above that tells you the general condition it's in and then there are some pictures here of the the car when it was in auction in japan and this is all perfect so i asked the dealer to also send me um the uh the the, the frame number of the, the car, so the VIN number, uh, or the chassis number, uh, and that's on a plate. And so, just to make sure they tally up, um, and here it is here, on the certificate, and this is the same as the plaque that's uh, in the car. Uh, note that it ends in 88. Um, and so there's nothing really too out of place here. Um, the condition of the car is good. Uh, these are the little points about it here. So actually there's A1. Basically A is just a small scratch or something. Not need to worry about it. Um, and, and so here we are. Uh, and these photos also tally up with the, the photo um, that was that's now of the car being auctioned. So actually I was going to buy this. And I thought I would do a background check. Um, cause I hear it's common to clock cars. And now it would be quite hard to clock this one, you would think, because you have the uh, export certificate with the actual um, reading, the, the, the mileage on it, or at least 42,000 kilometers on it. Um, and when I did the background check, I was kind of surprised to see a couple of things. I did the background check with the Japanese Japan car history check. And they came back and said, okay, if this is the number, Let's make this a bit bigger here. If this is your VIN number here, ending in 88, um, and this is the car, this is the engine. There are two different uh, engine numbers for this, but that's that's as expected. Um, it comes back that it's got an accident report, and this accident re report was picked up in uh, auction. Now, almost all cars that go through Japan go through an auction, so that makes sense as well. And here's the interesting thing, the registration uh, and mileage history. It's showing that in 2018, so this is 2020, in 2018, this is the middle of 2020, this car had 42,000 kilometers on the clock. And the inspection's not due for another two years, so it's due 2020. And before it got round to getting inspected again, it's hit the auction. And uh, it's gone through this auction, TAA Yokohama, and it's got 92,000 kilometers on the clock. Now, the certificate, I have no reason to doubt that the certificate that was sent is actually a, a valid certificate. Um, this look, It looks pretty authentic. Um, and you'd have to give me the certificate anyway. Um, so it'd be very hard to fake this. But actually, then, if you look, this says 2018, February 2018. The 9th of February 2018. It has 42,000 kilometers on it. Um, and actually, that, that tallies up with what the background check says. The background check says 42,000 kilometers at 2018, but there's no record of what happened to it for the two years afterwards. And basically, the seller is claiming that in the two years afterwards, this car has only completed, uh, as was shown in the advert here, has only completed 27,000 miles. Um, which is, he's claiming, 43,000 kilometers. 
So let's have a little look. Uh, I think the certificate's correct um, and the date's correct, but there's no accounting of the mileage for two years. And if I have a look at this, because they have to send me the auction report, they don't have to, but I asked for it. Um, and here's the first thing that made me suspicious. There's a lot number here, and it's 7135. I would expect that to be the lot number. Um, and interestingly, if I look at the report that the, the the car history guys got back to me with, I asked them for the auction report, and here it is. 7135, so if we go back to the the one the car dealer sent me, this auction report is not the one for this car. And in actual fact, you can tell it's not the one for the car. Um, it's got the correct uh, model, so that's a Generation 4 Prius. Uh, it's got the mileage as expected, if that is true. But what they forgot to do was tweak this piece here. This here is actually the VIN number or the frame number. So this auction sheet here doesn't match this car, and it's not a grade 4. This piece up here is a genuine snip from the actual auction when they were buying it, that telling you, well, it does have a class 4 here, so that, that can't be true either. But the rest of it looks about right. That's the car model, it's a silver, um, it did go through this auction house, so we've got the correct auction house, and we've got the correct lot number. And if we compare that with the, the, the Japanese history check, actually, the lot number tallies up, and so does the location. It says also, the background check said it was on the 7th of December, so if we have a look on the uh, auction here, we probably see a date somewhere, I believe there is a date that says this was bought in December, um, and it does tally up. This was the export of the, well that's a registration date, somewhere in here. Um, not to bother. So here's the things. This, he's claiming is a a category 4, 43,000 kilometers, and very blatantly it is an R with 92,000 kilometers on it. So he scrubbed 50,000 kilometers when he imported it, which is bad news. And what's actually even worse news is that grade R, which you probably should never import, um, has accident damage or at least it's been repaired. Um, it's hard to tell what exactly has gone on here, but you can tell there's a lot of damage to this. So W is a repair mark, uh, XX uh, shows that a panel's been replaced. So these two doors have been replaced, so it looks like it's been a side impact. And that's bad news. There is damage all the way around on this car. Uh, it's certainly very small damage in many places, but it looks like it's had a slight side impact. Um, and at least this auction report here, you can see that the um, the VIN number, the chassis number, has actually tallied up. And so that is correct. Um, they also sent me some pictures, and here are the pictures of the car. And interestingly, if you have a look, these pictures here are the same as the pictures that the dealer sent. So some of the stuff that the dealer sent are uh, actually true and accurate. Um, but it's an accident damaged car, it's got 50,000 kilometers more on it than uh, was expected. Um, and so basically it's fraud and the way they're getting the way they're managing to do this is because the car was inspected 2018 and that's the last official mileage there's no other record of the mileage apart from when it went through the auction and nobody bothers to pull the auction report because you've got to pay for this I paid a hundred pounds to get this um, which you know has saved me buying a car that's got accident damage and 50,000 K more on it um, and so I did two things. The first one is I sent the uh, documentation that the seller sent me back to the Japanese car history people and said, hey, maybe you pulled the wrong car. Because, you know, everyone makes mistakes. And they got back to me and said, well, here, here's some things you should note. Um, the export certificate looks correct, which is actually what tallied up with what I thought. Uh, but the auction report is not. The VIN for that vehicle, so yes, they didn't put the correct VIN number on that auction report. So the auction report isn't valid because it's not for that car. Um, the registration of the car, um, yes, So and the registration number of the actual car is different to the registration that's actually shown in the auction here. So these are two different numbers um, that are shown. 
It had 42,000 kilometers in 2018, February. And actually, when I when I contacted the de dealer, he said, no, 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 it's it's September, because they're trying to mix the numbers around. And then he, he challenged me and said, well, do you actually read, can you read Japanese? And it's quite clear here, this is 2018, and there's a 2 and there's a 9. But actually, what's really handy in this is that there's a translation right here, where it says, that one there is month, so that's the month. And this little symbol here is the day, and that's the date. So actually, no, you don't need to be able to read Japanese. You just be able to have to match up the symbols. Um, they also said that um, there were some other interesting things. It was deregistered uh, 29, 2019 November, so that's about correct. Auctioned on the 7th of December, and that's correct as well. So they, they have given me the correct uh, date for the auction. Um, but here's the thing, 92,000 kilometers on it. It was exported uh, in December, late December, and the reason is that basically the higher uh, mileage is not shown on the document as it was never re-inspected for another registration period, and that's very important. So the registration period, which looks like it's about two years, um, if it's not re-inspected, um, they can basically scrub those miles off and keep you know, just add an extra thousand or so for those two years. And there's no other record other than the auction report. Um, and so, and, and then it goes on to say that basically it's it's now over two years later and he's claiming there's only a thousand kilometers gone on it. Um, and, that, you know, basically saying it's misleading and probably, uh, probably fraudulent. And, um, well, it absolutely certainly is fraudulent. Um, but it got me thinking, you know, uh, I did, of course, report this. Because uh, here's the car, and the car looks it looks like it's in mint condition, low average uh, mileage, um, with fifty thousand plus. <laughs> Add another fifty thousand. Um, I did report this to Auto Trader. Turns out in the UK, the only place that you can report these things is to Trading Standards, um, which is a bit disappointing because I don't think they'll actually do anything about it. Um, I have seen that Auto Trader have removed, um, which is nice, and. Um, but if you look at the uh, the other cars he's got for sale, so he's just got a new one in here, 2014, 31,000 miles. Um, I would be very suspicious of any of these cars. Um, so what's the long and short? I guess the long and short is be very careful uh, if you find a car, and it's not even that good a deal. It's just a reasonable deal for a very good looking car. Um, it might be too good. Um, I think from here on in, I would probably always pull the auction report. Um, although it leaves me £100 out of pocket with this, I think I'd probably make a deal with the, the seller that basically says, you know, um, you either include the auction report in on the, on the sale um, from a verified source. Um, or if it doesn't come back as expected, then you have to reimburse me. But um, as I say, I phoned this guy. Um, he was very unhappy with me. And uh, and I guess here we are then. So there's how you can scrub 50,000 kilometers off of a car, which apparently is very, uh, very common to do. And it's cost you in the UK about £130 to um, do mileage correction. And part of the reason you'd want to do a mileage correction would be if you're importing a car and it's in kilometers, by law it has to be displayed in miles here. So you have to switch something at some point um, in order to change the odometer. And so there we have it.